Okay, Kate, thanks. Thanks for coming along today. They're going to demonstrate to us the venipuncture technique that we would use in our health board. Absolutely. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is to think about PPE. Okay. So we would normally wear a white apron and obviously our blue nitrile gloves. For the purpose of this, because it's a demonstration, I'm just going to wear my blue nitrile gloves. Yes. Okay. The next thing I want to show you is the equipment that we would use and you would get that together in a clean white tray. Today, what I'm going to show you is two different venipuncture devices that we use within our organisation, and I'm going to demonstrate both of them. The first one is our butterfly needle, and the second one is called a quick shield. So, for the butterfly needle, the first thing that you would need is a butterfly needle and our vacuate container, our blood bottles, and something to clean the skin with. Okay. I see that that's a Clonel wipe with chlorhexidine yeah. in it. Is that what's always used? Within this organisation, within acute services, we tend to use this because we use these wipes for the majority of our other clinical skills. Right. However, because the device is not staying in and we are removing it, we can use alcohol wipes if need be. So, so long as you use something that's 70% isopropyl alcohol, that's the key thing here? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. The other thing that we'll need is a gauze swab for when the needle is removed and also a tourniquet. Okay. The quick shield is a slightly different device. What you'll need is a quick shield holder and the needle. Again, a blood bottle, something to clean the skin with, your tourniquet and also your gauze swab. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to demonstrate the butterfly needle. And for like all procedures that we do with our patients, we need to get consent from the patient. And we do that how we normally would for any sort of clinical procedures that we're doing within the clinical setting. Okay. I would also make sure that the patient's comfortable. Yes, absolutely. Patient comfort, comfort absolutely. is very important. So first thing to do, once you've explained the procedure to the patient, you want to look for and feel for a good vein. Can you remember what the characteristics of a good vein is, Lynn? Yeah, something bouncy, refillable, and also the direction that the vein's going in and that it doesn't pulse. Absolutely, absolutely. So what we're looking for is a nice bouncy vein, okay? So use two or three fingers to feel your patient's arm or hand. For vena puncture, we tend to start up in the antecubital fossa and the, and, the, and the upper arm area and feel for a nice good vein. And then once you've done that, what you want to do is to pop your tourniquet on. Okay, and your tourniquet is going to be applied roughly about three, three finger breaths above where, of where your puncture site is going to be. So where okay. you put that needle in. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to tie this tourniquet in a way that it's easy for me to release it at the end of the procedure. Okay, and you can see that because I've got two wings hanging out in um, one side of the tourniquet here. Okay. Okay. I'm quite happy I've got a good vein here, so I'm going to give the area a good clean okay. using my, my Clinical Wipe. Okay, I'm just going to pop that in my waste bin. Mm. So you can see I've got a nice big wipe here. All right. And I'm going to give not only the vein that I'm planning to go into, but also the surrounding areas. Okay, a good clean to decontaminate the area. So just up and down like that? Up and down and also side to side. Oh, so both directions. Absolutely, because that means you get a nice lattice pattern and it just means that you have got a good site for decontamination as well. Okay. How long are you doing that for, Kate? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And you also, what's really important is that you allow that to dry. Okay. okay? And you don't insert the needle while it's still wet. Okay. So while that's drying, what I'll do is I'll put together my venipuncture kit and I'm going to demonstrate the butterfly one first. So I have my butterfly needle and you can see that you have an open here. So I'm going to open the package and I'm going to pop that uh, rubbish in the bin. At one end you can see that I have what we call butterfly wings and that is the needle end and then at the other end we have the end that you're going to attach your vacuate container to where your blood bottles are inserted. Okay so gently unscrew the sheath and then pop on your vacuate container. Okay. okay, and I see that fits quite securely. It does, it does. 
It's very important, Lynn, that you don't stick your fingers in the, in, in the vacuate container because not only will you increase the risk of you getting a needle stick injury because that is a sharp because it pierces okay. the blood bottles, it will also increase the risk of you contaminating the blood sample. Of course, of course, yes. We've absolutely. got to make sure that we, we adhere to that non-touch technique. Okay. So you can see at the butterfly end here, you have a set of wings, okay? The easiest way to insert the needle is by bending up those butterfly wings and you can see that there's a bumpy side, okay? And if you hold the wings together and unsheath the needle, that means that your needle is pointing in the right direction. So when you say the needle's pointing in the right direction, you're meaning the end of the needle, the tip of the needle. Yes. Can you explain that yes. a bit clearer? So you can see, can you see here the end of the needle? Yes. Okay, and there's an open section to it. So that beveled end. That beveled end, Lynch, okay? And that basically should be pointing to the ceiling. Okay. Okay? Yes, So you, that's clear. You always want to make sure that is the case before you go into the, the vessel. Okay. All right? So I'm holding the, the needle appropriately. My hand is well away from the needle, so I'm not contaminating it. I'm going to use my dominant hand to go in which is right-handed and with my other hand I'm going to keep it below my puncture site and even just put a wee bit of traction below the vessel. Okay. All right. Really important we don't touch that area because that would contaminate it. Absolutely. You've decontaminated that site. We do not want to contaminate Con it again. Yeah. Okay. These are not sterile gloves. Once you know exactly where you're going to go you want to go in at a kind of 30 de degree angle until you see flashback in this chamber here. Okay. Okay. Oh, I see the you flashback see, see there. The blood yeah, in that chamber there. So that means that I'm in the vessel and I don't need to go any further. Okay. The needle has done its job, it's pierced the vessel. What I now want to do is to attach my blood bottles to get my sample. So how do you do that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold one of the wings. So if you flatten one of the wings, yes. okay, and that just means that you're not letting the needle go. Okay. You don't want to let the needle go and then the patient it moves and it dislodges. And then what you want to do with your other hand is attach your blood bottles into your vacutina. All right, and once I do that, you will see the blood travelling down the chamber and filling up the blood bottles. So you just push it on with your you thumb. You just push it on with push your the thumb. Blood bottle with okay, your thumb. and you attach the blood bottles until they stop filling. Okay. Okay, and you can see that through the window of the blood bottle. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can see it stopping now. Once it's stopped, you disconnect. Okay, and the blood, each blood bottle also has a black line to give you an idea of where the level of blood should be. Once you have disconnected, you want to invert it a couple of times, just to mix. Just to sample. gently mix it with yeah. the additives and the, the sample blood jam. You don't want to shake it too vigorously because what that can do is damage the blood cells. Is that what they call a hemolyzed sample? Yes, that's exactly what they call it, Lynn. Okay, and that can affect your blood results. Okay. Once you've done that, you pop it in your tray and if you've got multiple samples to take, you can attach the blood bottles in the correct order. Once you are ready to come out, okay, or take, remove the needle, the first thing you want to do is remove the tourniquet and you can do that with one hand. What we then want to do before we remove the needle is to activate the safety device, okay? All the devices that we use within this organisation have a safety mechanism to reduce the risk of a needle stick injury. On the butterfly, it is positioned here. You can see that the needle retractor is below the butterfly needle and what you do is you pinch and then you pull back until the needle is completely retracted into the device. I heard a click. Yes, and that once you hear the click, that means that it's completely retracted. So the needle won't slide back mm -hmm. forward again and cause a needle stick Absolutely. injury. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Once you've done that, you pop it into a sharp spin. You don't leave it lying around. Okay. okay. So we call that skin to bin. So straight in to the sharp spin. Okay. And that way we reduce the risk of anybody getting a needle stick injury and we don't leave our needles lying around. Okay. okay. Always make sure as well, once you've taken the needle out, is that you have a white swab over the puncture site to stop any bleeding that may occur. Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions about that process, Lynn? No, I don't, but I'm quite intrigued to see what's going to be different with yes. the quick shield. Okay, so the next device I'm going to show you is a quick shield device, okay? Um, and it is slightly different to, to, to the butterfly. 
Having said that, the beginning of the process is exactly the same in terms of gaining patient consent, making sure the patient's comfortable, applying the tourniquet and cleaning the skin. Okay, so I'm just going to tie my tourniquet again and give the area again a good clean with my clinical wipe. And I'll do that for 30 seconds. Think 30. That's a good way to remember it. Think 30. Okay, in my lattice pattern. Okay. So while that's drying, we'll put together the, the, the quick shield um, equipment. So we have a quick shield and we have our needle. Okay, so you can see that it looks quite different to the butterfly. You'll notice that the quick shield needle has a grey cap in the end. What we do is we unscrew that cap and we pop that into the quick shield device. Just using a non-touch technique. There. Again, a non-touch technique. And you, and you screw that on until it's secure. You'll notice on the top of the cap there that there is a black dot. Oh, I can see that, yes. Okay, and that means when I unsheath that needle, the needle is pointing the right way with that beveled edge pointing to the, to the ceiling. ceiling. Okay. okay, so it's just, a, it's just a wee tip, okay? Can you see that? That the beveled edge there is pointing yes, to I the can. ceiling. Okay, so when you go in, again, watch you don't contaminate the skin by touching it. Use your dominant hand, okay? Hold the device in such a way that your hand is well away from the needle, but also so you can see the flashback in the chamber there. Okay, it's it appears, quite a different it looking is, flashback it chamber. Is, it's isn't not it? as obvious, so we do have to look really closely for it appearing, and it appears just in that chamber there behind okay. the needle. Okay. okay. So again, I'm going to go in at a 30 degree angle. Can you see that flashback there, Lynn? I can. Okay. I can. And at that point, I am not going to move my hand. I'm going to keep my hand steady with the needle, and I'm going to use my other hand to attach the blood bottles. So again, and just pushing it in with your thumb? Push it in with your thumb and just wait till it stops filling exactly the same as before, okay? Once that blood bottle has filled, remove it and invert it a couple of times. Just to mix the contents again? Absolutely, and if you have multiple samples, you attach them on in the correct order, okay? Once you have taken all your blood samples and you are ready to remove your needle, take the tourniquet off, Take a gauze swab and just place that over the needle. Be careful not to press down before you come out because the needle is still in the vessel and that can potentially damage the skin okay. and cause a bruise. Yeah, okay. So just place the gauze swab over, remove, press down, and on a hard surface, you want to activate the safety device. You oh, and I hear the click. You hear the click, click again. over. Okay. So it's a safety shield that goes over the needle. Okay. okay, and you can see that it's locked in that device. But again, skin to bin, straight in the sharp spin. Okay, and you just make sure there's not too much bleeding there. Okay, Lynn? So is that the demonstration? That's, of yep, that's the demonstration of both the safety devices that we use within this organisation, the butterfly and the quick shield. That's been really useful. But just a, a couple of summary things yep. um, is a couple of phrases that you used. Absolutely. So when you're cleaning the skin, it's the isopropyl alcohol, but commonly we use something with clarhexidine yes. in it as well. Um, and you're doing that for 30 seconds. 30 so that seconds. Think 30 that you spoke about. Um, next was the, the tourniquet and the spacing the three fingers from the, the puncture point to the tourniquet. Then it was the going in at that 30 degree angle. So that fits with the think 30, is yeah. the 30 degree angle. And then the, the, the click, the audible click yes. when you're activating the safety device before skin to bin uh, to reduce needle stick injuries. Absolutely, absolutely. Kate, thank you very much for that. Thank you.